We don't pray to flesh and blood. Not sent to serve flesh and blood. We serve the spirit of the living God. Jesus, who is God Almighty, is before everything. Yesu, aminali murungu, ampangu mpamfu, anali ipo pachi, ambi pachi na chiri jonse. The spirit of him is before everything. Nsimu wa iye, ndu mene onali ipo pachi ambi. Okay, so far he's right. Because Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Not his flesh. His flesh which is a sacrifice for the church. Have many titles. Lamb of God. Son of God. Son of man. Son of David. David. Messiah. Man Messiah. Prophet. Neneri. Apostle. So his body, which was flesh and blood, came out of the house of David. Came out of the tribe of Judah. His bloodline came through 42 generations. From Abraham to David was 14 generations. From David to the caraway of Babylon was 14 generations. From the caraway of Babylon unto Christ was 14 generations. So when the Bible says he is before all things consist that's not talking about his body that's not talking about the flesh and blood that's not talking about that which was born of the virgin Mary this is a major contradiction because the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world and Christ was before Abraham and the 42 generations that was named the genealogy of Christ in Luke chapter 3, 23 through 38 traces back to God himself, again, who was before Abraham. This is why the blood of Jesus redeems the sins of men, because he initiated life. The Ruach that he blew into the nostrils of Adam, who came from dirt. But where did the life blood come from? <laughs> I'm going to ask that again. Where did the life blood come from? We know Adam came from dirt, but where did the blood come from? It came from Christ. Okay? And Christ is God. Because Hebrews 4.12 says he pierced to the division of soul and spirit. You got to account for where the blood came from when Adam was created in God's image and likeness. And how did Christ, who ascended into heaven with the same body, he was crucified in and raised up from the dead, how did he go into heaven with that same body? For the first time, someone rose from the dead and remained alive to this day. Nobody ever died and came back and stayed alive without dying again. That's the whole point of him sitting at the right hand of the Father. Christ sacrificed himself. God gave his only begotten Son. He gave himself in the Old Testament when he first created men. Okay? So you got blood in and blood out. And he gave himself in the New Testament when he died for men. You see the parallel? But in order to do this, he had to be separate from himself. When Christ ascended into heaven, he still represents his earthly capacity and his deity in the Father who was in the beginning. He sits at the right hand of himself. Okay, because he said, I and the Father are one. Now me, I am not one with my Father and neither are you. So Jesus Christ, being the Son of God, is God sacrificing himself into the bloodline of men that he created to redeem them from sin because when Adam sinned, he became separate from himself. So God would have to do the same since Adam was made in his image and likeness. This is why Christ, the scriptures say he became accursed 
and said to the Father, Glorify me with the glory I once shared with you before the foundation of the world. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily is all in Jesus. He is not the second person of the Godhead. He is the fullness of the Godhead. There is no God but Him. His flesh was in God. The spirit that's in Him, that was God. In order for the Godhead to be in Christ, there cannot be a moment where He took a break from being God. And this is why I say lying Geno teaches an avatar false doctrine. Okay, Jesus cannot both be the fullness of the Godhead and take a break from being God or some avatar of the Father was produced in the flesh as God. No, the flesh of Christ is God. His body was glorified. We don't pray to flesh and blood. We're not sent to serve flesh and blood. We serve the spirit of the living God. Okay, Geno Genesis teaches this false doctrine according to 1 Corinthians 15.50, which says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Well, degenerate men who have traces of sin in the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God if they don't repent. But Christ is not a degenerate, and just because you have flesh does not mean you are sinful. God has flesh and blood because man was made in his image, and the Most High gave man a piece of himself. So flesh is not the problem. Sin is. When it says God is spirit, that does not mean. He does not have a body. It means man is too sinful to see and touch him. But Gino keeps saying a spirit don't have blood. And this is hearsay. Because after Adam ate of the fruit, he didn't die right away. Adam didn't die until he was 930 years old. That's when he died physically. But when he ate of that fruit, Adam died spiritually. Adam Okay, that is a lie. Adam died immediately after eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Gino never teaches what the fruit really means. Adam died immediately because he was no longer immortal. It was equivalent to a blind man who used to see struggling to breathe when he never had to breathe. He just had the breath of life. There's a big difference. So that was death. To Adam, it would just take 900 years for his physical body to cease to exist. Okay, he could no longer see in the spirit realm, so that was blindness to him, and he was literally gasping for air because, again, he once had the breath of life. Okay, so instead of having to breathe uninterrupted, he had consecutive perpetual breath. All right, he never had to breathe interrupted until he sinned. Today, we struggle to breathe and we don't even know it <laughs> because we don't know what it is like to be immortal. But Adam knew what it was like. I do not believe Adam slept unless God put him into a deep sleep, which the scriptures say he did. So the time clock on Adam's life did not start until after he sinned. I said, well, it's not an apple. It's not an orange. It's not grapes. The forbidden fruit is the sin of the world. No, that's a very vague statement. Adam didn't even know he was naked before eating of the proverbial forbidden fruits. He had to be taught the secrets of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Who is the God of this world? The serpent. So Adam learned how to kill men with the sword from the serpent who taught Eve the secrets. Okay. It talks about these secrets in the book of Enoch. 
but you do not believe in the book of Enoch, so you can't even teach the origins of sin. But let's get back to Christ, who is the Son of God, and he is also God. So as I have stated, lying Geno teaches what I have coined an avatar doctrine, which suggests that while Christ was on earth from an infant to a 33-year-old man, he could not be God. He could only be the son of God while he was on earth because according to Geno, God don't grow or die. So the flesh was made as a living sacrifice, what he's describing as an avatar. Okay, he never said particularly that Jesus is an avatar, but the way that he's describing his whole situation on earth is as though he was an avatar, just a vessel. Okay, even though Geno says he don't pray to flesh and Christ could not be God while still in the flesh. So he's basically saying while Christ was in the flesh, he would not pray to Christ, even though Christ told the disciples or he told the Pharisees, so long as the disciples are with me in the person, they don't have to pray. Okay, but when the bridegroom is taken away, they're going to have to fast. He's letting them know that he's God while he's in the flesh. But Gino is saying that somehow Jesus Christ is still God because he's on record saying that Jesus Christ is God. But he's saying that after Christ died and rose again, somehow he became God again. But he was not God while he was on earth. And that's heresy. That's what I call it, the avatar false doctrine. Okay, so according to this logic, for 33 years, Christ couldn't be God. He took a break from being God. Does that make any sense? Of course not. Revelation 13, 8 says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, which is obviously before the 33 years Christ dwelled on this earth. So this means when God blew breath into Adam's nostrils, he had the same body he ascended into heaven after revealing himself to Thomas. It was his glorified body. Because remember, Christ said, glorify me with the glory I once had with you before the foundation of the world. Okay, so in the beginning, it said, let us make man in our image and likeness. You see that? But let's go to John chapter 20, verse 24 through 29. Okay, it says, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So in John chapter 20 and Genesis 2 proves that God has flesh and blood because in Genesis 2, the breath, which is oxygen, that God blew into Adam's nostrils came literally from the body of Christ. Okay, the blood that run through Adam's veins came from Christ. Again, he gave his blood in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Blood in, blood out. All right? Only the shedding of God's blood can redeem men from sin. Well, God don't die. He didn't die. He rose again. Dying and ceased to exist is different. Geno refers to 1 Corinthians 15 50, which says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, 
this refers to men and not God. But Gino is referring it also to God. Okay, the same way Romans 3 verse 4 refers to men saying, let God be true and every man a liar. So that's just like saying Romans 3 verse 4 refers to Jesus as well. So are you calling Christ a liar? You got to put the scriptures in context. What's referring to all men and what's referring to God? Although Christ came in the flesh, he was still God and still is God and has always been God. So Jesus Christ is God. He has flesh and blood, always has had flesh and blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood, which was the shedding of God's blood for the redemption of men who has blood. Okay. Because Adam, even when Adam was immortal and Christ created Adam, okay, the blood came from God. So maybe I will do a part two to this because there are still some other things I wanted to clear up. But until then, let me know your thoughts in the comments and enjoy the rest of your day.